Have you ever wondered how deeply slavery is woven into the fabric of the United States? Let's journey back to the 17th century, where this dark chapter in American history began. In the early years of the American colonies, most labor was performed by indentured servants, people who voluntarily traded years of their labor in exchange for passage to the New World. But by the mid-17th century, a shift began to occur. Economic incentives started to favor a system of lifetime servitude, and this servitude started to align more and more along racial lines. The colony's economy was heavily dependent on agriculture, particularly the cultivation of tobacco. This labor-intensive crop required a large and reliable workforce, but there was a problem. Indentured servants, after working off their debts, became free members of society, often becoming competition for their former masters. The solution? A permanent enslaved workforce. To justify this morally indefensible shift, a narrative began to emerge that associated blackness with servitude. Laws were enacted that codified this connection, transforming societal prejudices into legal principles. By the end of the 17th century, the transition was complete. Slavery based on race had become the norm in the American colonies. This shift to slavery wasn't just about economics. It was about power and control. It created a social order where one group of people could be owned by another, where the value of a human being was reduced to their capacity for labor. In this way, the American colonies laid the foundation for a system of racialized slavery that would last for nearly 250 years. It was a system that would not only shape the economy and society of the burgeoning nation, but would also leave an indelible mark on its culture and consciousness. Thus began a system that would shape the destiny of a nation. As we move forward, we'll explore the profound ways in which slavery influenced the development of the United States and its lasting impact on the country we know today. The role of slavery in the economic development of the United States is undeniable. Slavery was more than a social institution. It was a cog in the wheel of the American economy, powering its growth and expansion. In the South, slavery was the backbone of the economy. The fertile soil of the southern states provided an ideal environment for farming. Large plantations emerged, sprawling across the landscape, growing cash crops like cotton and tobacco. The labor, however, was provided by enslaved people. They toiled under the scorching sun, their hands stained by the cotton they picked and the tobacco they harvested. These crops were then exported to Europe and other regions, pumping wealth into the American economy. But the economic influence of slavery wasn't confined to the southern states. The North, often perceived as detached from the institution of slavery, was also economically entwined with it. Northern banks and investors provided the capital for the expansion of southern plantations. They financed the purchase of enslaved people and the land on which cotton was grown. Moreover, northern merchants reaped considerable profits from the trade in cotton and other southern goods. It's also worth noting the role of slavery in the development of American industries. The cotton produced by enslaved people was used in northern textile mills, fueling the growth of the American textile industry. The shipping industry too thrived on the transportation of cotton, tobacco and enslaved people. So you see, the American economy north and south was intricately linked to slavery. The prosperity and growth that America enjoyed during this period were not just the result of entrepreneurial spirit or technological innovation. They were also the fruits of the labor of millions of enslaved people who worked tirelessly on plantations, in factories and on ships. So the country's economic growth was in no small part built upon the backs of enslaved people. But the impact of slavery extended beyond economics, deeply permeating the social structure of the era. It created a societal framework that was as complex as it was divisive. At the apex of this social pyramid were the white people, with enslaved individuals occupying the lowest echelons. This wasn't simply a case of one group dominating another. Rather, it was a deliberate construct designed to maintain power and control. The racial hierarchy was a tool to justify the inhumane treatment of enslaved individuals, reinforcing the notion that they were less than human. This mindset, once established, was hard to shake off, and its echoes resonate even today. But this hierarchy wasn't just about race. It also served to stratify white society along class lines. A small fraction of the white population, mainly the plantation owners, held the majority of the wealth and power. 
They were the upper crust, the aristocrats of the new world. Beneath them was a larger group of white individuals who did not own slaves. These were the yeoman farmers, craftsmen, and laborers. Despite being in the same racial bracket as the plantation owners, they occupied a lower rung on the societal ladder due to their economic status. This class divide among whites was a direct consequence of slavery. It created a power dynamic that further entrenched the institution of slavery. The wealthy plantation owners used their influence to ensure laws and policies favored their interests, thereby preserving their wealth and the institution that enabled it. But it was more than just about preserving wealth. Slavery was a means to control not just the enslaved but also the poor white population. By creating a common enemy in the enslaved individuals, the elites managed to deflect attention from the economic disparities within the white community. In essence, slavery was not just an economic instrument, but a social one as well. It defined the societal norms, dictating who had power and who didn't, who was considered human and who wasn't. The social norms of the time were thus shaped by this institution of bondage. Slavery's influence seeped into American culture as well. It shaped the nation's self-perception, creating stark contrasts and deep divisions that resonated through art, literature, and music. For white Americans, the institution of slavery often served as a mirror, reflecting their perceived superiority and affirming their societal status. Conversely, for enslaved people, it was a heavy shroud obscuring their identity, their history, and their humanity. In the realm of art and literature, slavery became a common theme, a harsh reality painted on canvas and etched in lines of prose and poetry. It influenced great works, from the raw power of slave narratives to the subtle commentary woven into the fabric of Southern Gothic literature. In music, the echoes of slavery can still be heard, from the mournful tones of spirituals to the vibrant beats of jazz and blues. Like a dark ink, slavery stained the cultural canvas of America. The chains of slavery were broken, but its ghosts continue to haunt. As we delve into the aftermath of slavery, we must confront the harrowing truth of its enduring impact on the people who were enslaved and their descendants. The institution of slavery was not only a system of forced labor, it was a brutal regime that denied enslaved people their basic human rights. The deprivation was not limited to the right to freedom, it extended to the right to education, the right to own property, and the right to live a life free from fear and violence. It's important to remember that the brutality of slavery was a daily reality for those who lived under its yoke. They were subjected to inhumane treatment and abuse, their lives marked by pain and suffering. Yet the end of slavery did not mean the end of these hardships. The echoes of this brutal past continued to reverberate long after the Emancipation Proclamation was signed. The post-Civil War era saw African Americans grappling with a new form of oppression. Discrimination pervaded every aspect of their lives, housing, employment, education. The vestiges of slavery were manifest in the systemic racism that denied them equal opportunities and subjected them to violence and intimidation. The terrifying specter of lynchings and other forms of racial terrorism were grim reminders of a past that refused to be forgotten. As the descendants of those who were enslaved struggled to carve out a place for themselves in a society that continued to marginalize them, they carried with them the scars of their ancestors. The legacy of slavery has left an indelible mark on African American communities, shaping their experiences and defining their struggles in ways that are still felt today. The aftermath of slavery is not just a chapter in history, it's a reality that continues to unfold. It's a story of resilience in the face of adversity, of a people striving to overcome the remnants of a painful past. The legacy of slavery is a wound that has yet to fully heal. The journey towards healing continues as we grapple with the lasting impact of this dark chapter in our nation's history. So what was the role of slavery in the development of the United States? It was a backbone to the economy, a foundation for social hierarchies, and a force that influenced culture. Slavery was integral to the economic prosperity of the South, with enslaved people laboring on plantations, producing goods for global trade. This system also propped up the North, as banks and investors financed Southern plantations, and merchants profited from the trade in goods produced by enslaved labor. On the social front, slavery entrenched a racial hierarchy and divided society along class lines. 
It even permeated the realm of culture, shaping perceptions and influencing American art, literature and music. The echoes of slavery can still be heard today, in the form of systemic discrimination and racial inequality. Slavery was not just a chapter in American history, it was a force that shaped the nation's journey.